The following episode of the Maui Chamber of Commerce's Business Matters was originally broadcast on June 25th, 2024. The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff or management of visionary related entertainment. It's time now for Business Matters, brought to you by the Maui Chamber of Commerce. And now, here's your host, the president of the Maui Chamber of Commerce, Pam Tumpop. Good morning, Pam. Hey, good morning, Gary. How are you? I'm doing very well today. Ah, uh, well, it looks like a gorgeous day today. Thank you so much for all you do for our show. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Business Matters, brought to you by the Maui Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Pamela Tumpop, president of the Chamber. And today, we're going to speak to one of our great and regular guests, Dr. Eugene Tian of the Hawaii State Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, followed by an update from Scott Hopkins, um, telling us all about Feed My Sheep, a, an amazing nonprofit organization. I will also share that I am on their board of directors and have been blessed to uh, learn so much about this great organization over the years. So we're going to hear from both today, and uh, it's going to be a fun and exciting day. But we're going to kick it off with Dr. Eugene Tian, who is the Chief Economist of the Hawaii State Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, known as DBEDT, or DBED, as we all call it. His office conducts research on economic issues such as tourism, emerging industries, diversification, quality of life, technology, energy, and taxation. His team also produces the official statewide short-range economic forecast on a quarterly basis and the long-range population and economic forecast as well. These reports are invaluable to us. They are so helpful for you know, not only our state and county government is in preparing for how we move forward, but for also our businesses who depend on these this data to analyze uh, where the county is going, where the markets are going, how business is doing, and helps them plan forward. So it's always a great pleasure to have Dr. Eugene Tian on. And uh, good morning, Eugene. Thank you so much for joining us again on Business Matters. Yeah, good morning. Um, uh, yeah, I'm uh, happy to be on the radio show again. And uh, uh, I'm happy to talk about the economy, although the economy has uh, not so many good news. Uh, we release <laughs> our economic, yeah, we release our economic forecast uh, on the 6th of June, about three weeks ago. And yeah. we actually done, we, uh, a downgrade our economic forecast is mainly for a few re reasons. I think the first one is the tourism is pretty yeah. weak for the, for the state uh, during the last few months. So Maui actually has been declining in tourism for 14 months in a row. So as of May, because Maui yeah. actually started uh, declining in tourism uh, in April 2023, even before the wildfires. Mm -hmm. But the statewide, declining statewide has been about eight months. So um, we actually saw the first decrease on Oahu is in April. So the Oahu wow. has been always increasing because of the recovery of the Japanese visitors. But uh, right. the Japanese visitor recovery has been very slow. It's much lower than we expected. Right. It's mainly because of the uh, exchange rate. So the exchange rate yeah. is uh, $1 get about 160 in uh, these days. So the Japanese yeah. arrival is not uh, recovery as fast. It's currently, the recovery is about uh, for the first five months in this year. The recovery from Japan is about forty-four uh, percent. We were okay. expecting at the beginning of the year uh, the recovery we expect at about sixty. Now it's only about forty-four. Mm -hmm. and, and we also see the inflation. Hawaii is one of the 
highest inflation in the nation. We had about 5.2 percent uh, inflation, mm-hmm. consumer inflation in May. Because of the inflation, they only measure, this is a federal measure, they only yeah. measure Honolulu. But I think Maui will be similar. Uh, the yeah. main increase is actually on housing, is rental. Mm-hmm. And the rent increase over 10% is uh, pretty high. I think uh, Hawaii is uh, the top one or two in the nation in terms of uh, consumer inflation. And is that is time, that statistic? Yes. Now, that's is that statistic um, also geared toward uh, only looking at Honolulu, or do we have a breakdown on the rental increase for Maui versus other islands in the state? Yeah, because the number was uh, collected by the um, they called the U.S. Bureau of uh, of Labor Statistics. So the okay. federal government. Uh, collect the data. They only collect uh, Oahu, uh, Honolulu. They don't collect Lima Island. With the FEMA, with the FEMA putting, you know, uh, agency putting so many people in the short-term rental, I was curious because we we feel like it's much higher than probably even a 10% increase given uh, some of those rentals that occurred and people being displaced and moved around. Things were going pretty rapidly here. Yeah, I think... uh, a lot of these uh, are the impact of the Maui wildfire. Because uh, you know, think about it, the visitors, when they come to Maui, and they also, there was one third of them, they also visited Abe Island. So if the visitor decrease, uh, so far we see Maui still declining by about 25% compared with the first five months, 2023. So those uh-huh. visitors, uh, they are not coming, and and they are not also going to the other uh, island. The, the statewide impact is is also uh, spread. But uh, the good news, there are, there are some good news. <laughs> the good news is that <laughs> for for Maui, I think the last two weeks, I you know I'm watching Maui uh, on a daily basis. Uh, basically on the passengers. So the last two weeks, we see the passenger count to Maui is actually increased a lot. That means um, on the typical day, if it is everything normal, it's about 7,000 passengers to Maui. For the last two weeks, it came to about 6,700. It's close to the 7,000 already. So that is yeah. only happening in the last two weeks. I think that is a good sign. Yes, I, I've been traveling, and, and the planes have been full coming to Maui. Yeah, and, back home. yeah I think that is good. I, I think another thing, we uh, we are uh, feeling the economy is slowing down this year. Is uh, Another indicator is the general excise tax. It's mm-hmm. a very uh, comprehensive measure because the business is a business tax. The business will not pay uh, GE tax unless they have activities. Uh, but right. we see the general excise tax collection decrease two months in a row in April and May. So that mm-hmm. means uh, people, it's not only visitors, they right. uh, decrease their spending. Uh, because fewer visitors, but uh, the residents also uh, cut their spending, reduce their spending. So that is, um, I think one reason is they are holding because the inflation is high and also they uh, have some kind of uh, uh, expect, expecting the economy will slow. I think uh, the household spending, the resident spending is also declining. Uh, but statewide, we do have some bright spots. I think the, uh, currently the only bright spot is construction, but not <laughs> on Maui, though. The Maui right. construction is still declining. Uh, there are some increase in residential, uh, but overall the Maui construction uh, is uh, declining in terms of uh, building uh, value of building permits. But the other Nave Island, uh, the building permit insurance is high. So it's, uh, yeah. it's a pretty good increase. So the construction workers statewide is uh, historical high level at about 
41,000. That's the highest ever. So that is the good spot. Construction is good, but mostly it's driven by um, the government concern, like the federal mm-hmm. and the federal, the state uh, government uh, construction uh, highways and so on, the okay. uh, real construction. So uh, actually 2022, 2023, those two years, the government contract awarded was historical high at 5 billion each year for 23 yeah. and 24. So I think construction is still, uh, currently it might be the only uh, bright spot in the economy. Well, it's not the greatest news, Eugene, but we appreciate that you, you break it down for us because it's so important. And I know a lot of Maui companies, especially after the wildfires and with the decline, continued decline and disappeared, we've had so many people just watching. And, and March was not the recovery people had hoped or that we had seen coming out of COVID. Many people were watching and hoping June would start to be that. And um, I do appreciate you sharing that, you know, we've had but just the last couple of weeks a bit of an anomaly and we are seeing those numbers get back up to that closer 7,000 range. Um, it, it's so tough to call. And every every week, people are having to make tough decisions on what did they do with their business. And, and you know, as you say, uh, families are also looking at their budgets and, and looking at inflation and being more conservative with their spending. So it, it's, you know, um, such a challenge to know how to pivot during these times. But the data really helps us. Yes, I think uh, Maui, because uh, is uh, tourism is the major component of the economy. I think the tourism contribute about, uh, on a normal year, is about 80, uh, about 38% of the economy, 38%. But uh, currently, because uh, tourism is down on Maui, uh, the contribution is about 28%, decreased by about 10 percentage points. Uh, but it's still the highest uh, uh, depending on tourism. Uh, we see the job count, uh, for example, um, for the first uh, five months, the job count uh, for the uh, county is about 87.7% uh, of the 2019 level, uh, which uh-huh. is normally um, in the 2019, for example, the total job count is about 80,000. And I'm talking about okay. the weekend salary jobs. The payroll job yes. is about 80,000. Yeah. yeah, I think currently it's about 70,000. So we lost about 10,000. And that 10,000 oh. is still, uh, you know, need to be recovered. But the decrease is mostly in tourism. So tourism means uh, Go ahead. Yeah, the, the transportation, the, mm-hmm. uh, re, you know, art, entertainment, and the recreation accommodation, mm-hmm. and mostly is the full services. I think uh, mm-hmm. when, when, uh, when you folks live on Maui, I think, uh, you know, you might look at the numbers, I think uh, you may have a little difficulty uh, finding uh, restaurants because the the restaurant jobs lost the most. And currently, mm-hmm. I think uh, it's, it's only about 75% of the 2019 level. So we lost wow. the yeah we lost about the two thousand over two thousand jobs in in the food services which is the uh, lost the most. Then uh, we see the accommodation, we see the uh, in other services also lost more jobs. And our forecast is I think uh, for this year statewide uh, the which is our rebels uh, are you will have a slight decrease uh, from uh, compared from last year. And the mm-hmm. whole recovery in tourism, um, it will be about around 2027. So a few years. Wow. This, is the, this is the longest, you know, because um, the things, the impact is one after another. So the current, uh, currently is still recovering from the COVID, and also from the uh, the Maui wildfire. Yeah. 
Now, what about, um, in terms of those job recovery, you know, steps that you're talking about, what about the out-migration? Do you have any data on how many people have actually left the island and maybe how many of those jobs, you know, we won't expect to, to see come back? So what percentage we won't expect to see come back? Yeah, I think um, for the uh, for the data, we, we don't have the exact number, but uh, I think Maui has been, uh, the population has been level for a few years and decrease in 2022, decrease in 2023. But the decrease is mostly caused by the odd migration. For mm -hmm. this year, in 2024, we have the first uh, five months data. And from from the first five months data, uh, we do see that uh, the uh, the labor force, for example, for just uh, talking about Maui, uh, we lost mm -hmm. about two two thousand five hundred uh, uh, labor force. Labor force means people they either have a job or looking for jobs. So we lost right. about uh, two thousand five hundred from the beginning of the year this year. But if we compare with uh, the last year, uh, 2023, we lost about 5,000 uh, labor force. Uh, wow. But the, the, the loss is mainly is coming from those people. Either they gave up, they couldn't find a job, and they gave up. They are not in the labor force. They are not looking for jobs. Yeah. Or they have already moved out of state or even out of yeah. the island. So I think the data shows that uh, for Maui County alone, uh, statewide is the same. Uh, we lost we lost the labor force. And for Maui alone, we lost about five thousand uh, people from the beginning of the year. So those people they either give up or they move out of the island. So we do see yes. that the uh, people are moving, and we do see Maui actually uh, the population growth is slowing down for the last 10 yeah. years uh, we you know the between 2010 2020 we see maui the population growth was about 0.6 percent it's lower than the state is mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. maui normally maui population growth is higher among the among the counties but uh, for wow. the uh, between 2020 uh, between 2010 2020 maui's the growth rate was lower but into the future, we also see uh, the Maui growth will be uh, slow further to around 0.4%. So mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be a slow growth in population. Yeah, well, it was visitor down and, <laughs> you know, some, some, it was interesting to learn uh, during COVID how much publishing we actually did, you know, and as the visitor industry into a very abrupt halt, you know, to see that industry really hurting and then as it recovered to see them come back. But uh, it's one of those things that uh, as, as a consumer or a resident, we don't often think about how all of this correlates into, you know, getting back to the visitor industry and, and how broad the visitor industry's reach is throughout our entire economy and businesses that maybe you don't even connect with them. Yeah, I think that, you know, Eugene, you bring up some really good points because um, one of the things we keep hearing is, and, and everybody kept saying after COVID, <laughs> well, you know, where when are these workers coming back? At what point, you know, especially after you see unemployment and when are the workers coming back? But I think we also have to recognize that a lot of the workers that might have been on unemployment for a period of time you know, some of them, as you said, gave up, and others have just left. And so a lot of those that have left, we, you know, we might not likely see again. And so we, we keep hoping there's going to be a wave of people coming up of unemployment insurance and coming back into the workforce, and, and we're just not experiencing that. Yes, I think currently the Maui unemployment rate is still the highest among the counties at about 4.8%. Well, the statewide uh, employment rate is about 3.1. And yeah. uh, in terms of uh, the uh, weekly unemployment claim, uh, we are still double the normal, uh, the normal uh, time. The normal time 
for example, the uh, 2019 level, well, I think uh, among countries, about 120 people claim for unemployment insurance on a weekly basis. I think currently we are doubling, we are at about 2040. So 120, yeah. 2040. So we're still high. And yeah. But other countries, in terms of the labor market, they are pretty uh, stable in terms of unemployment rate. But the unemployment rate is only one part of the story. Um, though Hawaii, we have a lower unemployment rate compared with the nation. But uh, it's because our labor force is shrinking and people are not right. looking for jobs. They are not in the labor force. That keep the right. unemployment rate low. But, uh, you know, it is... Uh, even the lower rate, it may not be uh, a good. It may not be a good story because if more people, uh, what we call discourage, they give up. They yeah. are not in the labor force, uh, and though the unemployment rate is low, but it's still not good for the economy. Right. Is is there um, more of a correlation these days, or is there a way to do more of a correlation? With our our high housing rates, you know, we we talk about um, median median home prices, which we knew in, in projections we did from the uh, housing forum that we hit over a million dollar median home price in 2024, and of course we actually exceeded that, and and with very low interest projections, we projected a two million dollar median home price by 2042. Is there any correlation between um, our rising home prices and you know and rental costs, which, as you mentioned, have been going up uh, extraordinarily high these days, with our out migration? Yeah, I think uh, there is um, there is, the the main correlation. I think is is with the uh, market rate. Is the uh, also the um, you know, the demand is high. Maui is, is especially, I think, Maui County is, uh, compared with other neighbor island counties, uh, Maui is the most crowded county. Crowded means that uh, yeah. there are more people uh, in in a unit. So especially for yeah. renters. So Maui right. renters is the most uh, crowded, is uh, much higher than other counties. And for owners also, uh, is high in terms of uh, uh, this. The measure is in terms of h how many people per room. So Maui is right. high, and uh, I think that is uh, one of the reasons. I think there is a shortage, uh, housing shortage, and because of the housing, uh, the cost of housing, and when the mortgage rate is high, I think uh, there is other inflation. The owner. Uh, is normally will pass on the cost to um, to renters to consumers. So then uh, that's cost uh, mostly is is driven by the mortgage payment. Yeah. So I think Maui has uh, has a shortage, but there is you know there there is a challenge. I think on Maui currently um, there is about uh, I think there is one third of Maui's visitor unit. Uh, we call the visitor accommodation is is uh, Airbnb. We call it vacation yeah. rental. <laughs> but I think uh, Maui County uh, is trying to eliminate uh, the uh, seven thousand uh, vacation rental. Yeah. So I think I think that will uh, uh, impact uh, definitely will impact the Maui tourism. But the uh, Maui uh, tourism industry is uh, still. Uh, recovering, so there may be some kind of uh, is a challenge uh, because of the housing, the cost of housing, and the residents, especially the renters, uh, they are struggling. And another way is, uh, you know, is a balance. Uh, I think if we take care of the local residents and uh, limit or uh, have some kind of management on the the visitor on the visitors. And there will be some challenge to balance the two. So uh, I think yeah. Maui is, face, is facing that kind of challenge currently. Yes, yeah. I agree with you. And and um, 
you know, you're absolutely correct. And something we're looking at, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the data that we look at says that a lot of the vacation rentals, there's, there's different ideas on how, how they were created, um, especially a lot of the condo towns and what they were originally intended to be and how they've been used lately. And and um, unfortunately, we didn't do a great job of enforcing illegals and really drawing a line between those that were truly illegal and the, and um, differentiating between hotel units, the short-term rentals, and condo hotel units, the short-term rentals, and then uh, short-term rentals like Airbnb and VRBO, primarily the ones that people are mostly concerned about in residential areas. But um, yeah. it's a huge challenge now because even with FEMA placing, you know, residents in the condo hotel, um, that that means, you know, one, it really changed our rental market because it, it escalated rental prices based on what payment was paying. And not just in those areas, but um, across the island, things started shifting. And then the other challenge is that a lot of those condo hotels, given their HOA, a very high HOA fee, it, you know, there's a lot of question and a lot of debate and a lot of research, I think, that needs to be done to really analyze how many of those would even be appropriate as, as long-term rental units and are affordable given the way they were constructed and the cost to maintain them. Um, and, and, of course, high, big concerns over high um, renovation and repair work that needs to be done with unfunded HOA balancing in many cases to, to, to keep those units up to the standard they need to be kept up to with aging properties whether that's really going to work out or not. Um, and so we're, that is going to be debated today. It's the planning, <laughs> the planning commission, in fact. <laughs> They're going to hear, hear that first today. But um, our concern as the chamber is the analysis. And, and as you point out, it will also have impacts on our visitor industry as well. It's tremendous in that. But we need to look at the whole picture um, to try and figure out what that balance is and and also what our other options are for maybe housing needs because housing is number one for us and economic chamber of commerce as much as we want to see economic diversity without housing you know we don't know how we're going to attract the economic diversity when people are leaving and, and not uh, it's harder for them to come here and build a new industry as well so Lots of debate, and, and uh, the data that you put out is tremendously helpful as we go through all of this. Uh, what, uh, in terms of one last question, because I, I know you mentioned it uh, in terms of interest rates that have been rising and how that impacts, of course, our housing and affordability of housing. Is there some people who feel that uh, as we get closer and closer to the national election? that we might see interest rates drop. Do you have any sense of that or any triggers we might watch for that would tell us that might be getting ready to occur? I think the, um, the, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, I think most of us uh, economists uh, expect uh, there will be uh, interest rate cuts. But, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve Bank has been, uh, you know, keeping the interest rate uh, unchanged. So I think the current expectation is that the uh, interest rate cut will be maybe only one, only one time mm -hmm. instead of five or three, uh, maybe at the beginning mm -hmm. of this, at, at the end of this year. So we, don't, we won't see the interest cut until next year uh, in 2025, uh, but the mortgage rate will not decrease immediately. So it will be slowly decrease, but uh, if, if you look at the um, home sales, actually uh, even with still high interest rate, the home sales is still very strong. For Maui, for example, I think the first quarter this year, the increase in home yeah. sales is about 48%. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a big increase from last year. It's, it's over 48, 48%, the home sales. So there's a yeah. lot of lot of demand. I think uh, one is from uh, local, mostly from local residents, and 
and maybe another is from the uh, out of state. So Maui is always yeah. is always the uh, favorite place for out of state purchase, especially from the mainland, California, and the foreign is mainly uh, Canadians. Uh, but I think yeah. it's, uh, it's not so much from uh, foreign, but it's from the mainland. So I think the uh, interest rate may have some impact, uh, but uh, when, when you see the interest rate is, mortgage rate is still high, but people started still buying the properties. I think one, the, many of them are cash offers, are cash buyers. Yes. And, but another thing is they still feel confident. They still uh, like uh, love uh, Maui. They still coming to purchase the properties. I think there are there are two things. I think on <laughs> the affordability uh, or resolving the uh, housing affordability thing. I think one is to build more, build more new homes. So that yes. is one solution. And the other solution is you managing the existing properties. The managing the existing properties is eliminating the vacation rental and make them to uh, be available to local residents. So those two options, there are some challenges. You know, to build the new homes, uh, the developer uh, may see, oh, we have a population decrease, and uh, they will see people are moving out. So. Uh, Maui, I think in the last 20 years or so, the uh, the new home bu uh, building is about 500 a year. And mm -hmm. I think our projection, our projection, uh, that will be the future. I think the developer will build about 500 a year, but uh, it will wow. not resolve. It will not resolve the um, the shortage or the crowdness for the local current local residents. So then they will right. need another arrangement. I think the idea is to, you know, to uh, move those uh, vacation rental visitors to hotels. Then uh, they will uh, free those space for local residents. That is ideal situation. But uh, I think more than that, there will be impact to the tourism industry because the, uh, the vacation rental visitors, they tend to have a bigger party and they have more people. So in terms of uh, visitors, the impact is, is bigger than the, uh, than the rooms. You know, we have one third of the rooms are vacation rental, uh, but in terms of visitors, it may be higher. So then uh, there are some visitors may move to the hotels, but there will be some are not coming. So there will be some impact on tourism and also on the, uh, on the on the employment on the jobs in the tourism industry which is already uh, lowest in the county so uh, they will delay the visitor recovery for another few years yeah it's going to be a wild ride i'm like <clears throat> there's so many things to address and it's it's um all of them very big challenges <laughs> overcoming what we were behind on already and and uh, now need to expeditiously move forward with. Eugene, thank you as always for the great information. We really appreciate having you on the show and would love to have you uh, on again soon as we continue to issue more reports and, and uh, get uh, exciting updates. But thank you for coming on this morning and sharing all this with us. Okay, it's my pleasure. Uh, well, you have a wonderful day, and, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Yeah, same to you and to all the listeners on uh, Maui. Thank you. Take care, Eugene. Yeah, you too. Hello. Hi. Hi. So, Hello. Uh, How are you guys doing you. today? <laughs> Great. How are you? Very good. Very good. Oh, we're so yeah. glad to have you on. Yeah, I, I'm glad to be. I'm sorry about the confusion, but hey, you know, that's, uh, you guys are good at what you do, so it's all good. <laughs> we pulled it together. Deal with a little me, so 
Well, we want to ha- what we want to do is um, uh, let me just introduce you a little bit because John had Feed My Sheep, and if you're not familiar with Feed My Sheep, Feed My Sheep is a very unique mobile distribution uh, program, food distribution program, and they take our distribution to neighborhoods of need each week, passing out bags of grocery to anyone who needs their help. Um, as well as providing emotional support and security, a listening ear and prayer, so that they can experience love and judgment in their time of need. And the thing that always impressed me about Feed My Sheep is Feed My Sheep doesn't consider those they serve as clients. They consider those they serve as friends. Um, so, Scott, I want to just share that with everybody and welcome you to the show. Can you give us an update about some of the new and exciting things that are happening with Feed My Sheep and, and some of the work that you've been doing uh, given the increase made with the wildfires? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, the wildfires were devastating and heartbreaking to us all, and Feed My Sheep actually the day of the fire was getting ready to go there for normal distribution, and when we heard, uh, we actually we were able to get some emergency food out right away and, and go out and see a few of the many friends we had out there. Um, actually got to give one of them a ride back to Central Maui. He stayed up all night trying to help fight the fire at uh, an old church out there. And um, People definitely were going through a lot in that time. Uh, I think all the whole island was mourning, including us. So um, in the response to that, we definitely got a lot of nationwide help come in, but that allowed us to regroup and figure out how FEMA sheep could be part of the recovery. And what we've been able to do is uh, work with, you know, the Emergency Operations Center and the mayor's office to try to be in Lahaina again as soon as possible, and we were. And then in the um, in the time since then, what we've experienced is it displaced so many people and we were thankful that we had not just the Lahaina site, but our other three weekly sites for people who were moving away from the west side to be able to get to Kihei and Kahului and to Wailuku to get food from us there. So we've been seeing that shift, a lot of people moving to the other sites. Um, we also were able to, you know, kind of take our resources and, and try to make sure that we were spending our food money locally to support local farmers. We thought that was a pretty important thing. That was all in response to the um, in response to the, the need of the fire itself. Um, the yeah. support that came in, we have been using, number one, to acquire more food resources to match the need that has risen. There's been about a 15 to 20% increase at every one of our sites as a result of the devastation and the loss of jobs and the, the loss of normal for a lot of people. So um, so we've we've been able to put resources towards that, but we've also had some grants specifically for improving our capacity. So we are doing some small things now, like getting better equipment that's more efficient, that helps us do our work, but we're also looking to the future um, Feed My Sheep is on land that's donated to us. Um, and so we're actually looking at a plan to work with a local organization to actually have a, a permanent property for Feed My Sheep. And that's kind of the, the next step for us is we want to establish a place where we have a permanent warehouse. Um, and then my vision, as you know, Pam, for a long time has been to do something about poverty upstream to uh, not just give food but to help people take control of their food and uh, our dream for a long time has been to do some sort of um, community garden farming project and the 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 property that we're looking at is going to finally give us about four acres to turn into plots for individuals to come learn farming from experts that we will partner with and develop a space where they can actually have their own farming and then over time to give them the resources to maybe farm in a you know a race bed at their own place and help people take back that control of their nutrition so I, I that we can see people beautiful thriving vision. and you've yeah. been working on it for so long and i am so excited 
uh, you know, Feed My Sheep has been very blessed for many years to have have their operations on on you know land that has been shared with you. Um, but it's always been the, the organization's vision to own their own land, so they could do these things like the farming projects and. And I, I'm really thrilled with that because, especially today, in in um, with with even um, aquaponics and hydroponics, you can grow in such a small space these days. So whether mm-hmm. you've got land or you don't land, have land, and you just have space but have access to water, there's so many new ways that people can co- take control and grow their own food and have healthier food. Yeah. And, you know, Maui being set up the way it is, that is something that we don't feel like is possible, but it really is. And um, it's just a matter of maybe prioritizing it. Also, just removing some of the barriers. Um, I'm not a farmer, but I've worked with some organizations through Feed My Sheep with people that have amazing ideas. So this isn't about us doing our thing. It's about us trying to bring the community together to make those connections for individuals to have, um, you know, a sense of autonomy and, and self-reliance. I think that's an important thing. You know, people are in need for a variety of reasons, and it's not generally that um, they did something wrong. It's just that we're in a world with a lot of barriers to success. Yes. Um, and yep. so but I, we just look forward to seeing those taken down, and I'm excited about the possibilities and the probabilities of being able to do that finally soon. But, um, you know, well, it's something we've been thinking been about for a long time. I'm sorry. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah we've been thinking about it for a long time. Actually, we started the, the, the vision came about in 2012, back when we were just on a little postage stamp space, postage stamp space across from the post office on Hanson Road. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the other thing that I want to say is, um, for for those who get involved in growing and farming and, and learning about the process, mm-hmm. it's one of the activities that I have found, and, and a few, some people know I have a son who has bipolar disorder, and it's one of those things that when you're farming and you're growing plants, it's hard work, but you immediately see the fruit of your labor. And it's yeah. something that inspires and, and makes people feel so proud of what they've accomplished. They do the hard work, but you have this immediate reaction to see the result and and mm-hmm. to know that that was something that you create helped create and and uh, and now get to benefit from. And it makes people very proud. I... Yeah, Oops. yeah, and um, yeah. there's something about just touching the dirt. It's very therapeutic. Um, I, there's programs all over the country for, you know, veterans dealing with the various uh, struggles that they have or other people yeah. with mental health issues, just being able to connect with the soil and grow something um, adds adds value to the life that's really beyond just the food. Um, and I've experienced it. We work with a farm called Maheli Farms every month for our um, in conjunction with our HANA food distribution. And just the act of being there and, and being outside, breathing the air and, and touching the soil that becomes your food is really helpful for me. It's one of my, my monthly therapies. So I'm, I'm hoping to share that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's great for children. Children love it as well. I mean, they, they get yeah. that immediately as well and, and see it. Uh, that's why I think it's also so important that we start teaching our younger generations, since we are really working to be more sustainable in Maui and Hawaii mm-hmm. and want to, you know, have everybody um, be as productive in creating their own food as they would like to be. Uh, teaching the kids early on about the value yeah. of that. Absolutely. And the diversity of it. Yeah, yeah. it's very exciting. So, what, you know, with with uh, all the work you've been doing and is there a time frame with the land that you're looking at, or how can people um, be a part of this great movement right now to help you yeah, move absolutely. that forward? Well, right now we have been in con- 
contact with the organization. Um, they have a very serious effort. Uh, they're actually working on preparing the legal language for us to be a part of it. And that is uh, probably in somewhere in the weeks to months range of time. And then after that, it's um, we had a very generous gift a while back that's going to get us started, but we are going to be working on a capital campaign. Um, I'll be glad to tell you when we start it for sure, but we are working now to start raising the funds to actually put the building in place. This is a bit of a weird time to start a building project because there's a lot of other ones going, but we're going to do it because we see the opportunity and we see the, the yeah. chance to make something work here. Um, and so we are kind of in this, the, the legal definition stage of what it is. And, and then this August actually would probably be a good time for us to start raising funds because this August is the 25th anniversary. See, my sheep started in 1999. Wow. <laughs> in August, wow. just out of the, the trunk of Auntie Joyce's car. And yes. um, just those six <laughs> families that came for food. But 25 years later, here we are. So um, it all seems like it's falling into place for that to be where we we start going out for the public and reminding anyone who might have forgotten which is very few people a lot of people know what we're doing but what we're out there doing and what we want to do as a vision so this summer is kind of like a big summer for feed my sheep where we we look back but we're going to put some firm roots in the soil and say hey this is the year that we grow into what we've been plus and so we're going to well, celebrate we're going to throw a big party for all of our volunteers and anyone who's been a, a big supporter throughout the years we're going to have a big party at the church that started off grace bible where we're going to we're going to celebrate and then um you know feed my sheep is going to continue that celebration in the fall with our business after hours event with the chamber yeah. and we're going to invite yeah. another whole group of huge people who've been amazing supporters and we're going to celebrate the property that we're at right now uh one more time and then then it's time to get our hands pretty dirty, I think, after that, <laughs> and make sure that all the stuff starts happening when and where it should. It's so amazing. Well, I, you know, Scott, you've been doing a great job. Feed My Sheep has done an amazing job. You know, people know what Feed My Sheep does, but to recognize that you're up against a 25-year legacy, that is really tremendous. Um, but I also know you've also, there's new ways for people to go online and sign up to volunteer. Can you, we've got about a minute and a half. Can you quickly share how people can get online um, and also how yeah. they can get online and contribute, but where they can sign up to volunteer? Yeah, well, the County of Maui Volunteer Center has made it really easy. They have a website called Hands on Maui. We're just one of the sites. But if you go to handsonmaui.com, search Feed My Sheep, and then you can like us. And every time we add an event, add an opportunity, you'll see it there. You'll be notified, and you can respond to the ones you like. You can change your schedule there. You know, if that doesn't work for you, then you just call us at 808-872-9100, and me and Lisa will figure out a good spot in the schedule for you, and we'll work with you on how to get you plugged in. Fantastic. Well, Scott, thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait for... Uh, August to come around as we celebrate 25 years. This is going to be tremendous. And uh, just watch Feed My Sheep. FeedMySheepMaui.com is the website. Uh, thank you for joining us today. If you don't click at Business Matters, so to all of you who are our regular listeners and those who are new listeners, we hope you will join us again next week. Thank you so much for being a part of Business Matters. We wish you blessings and aloha for a beautiful, sorry week. 